Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Hey survivors, welcome to episode 151 of the Walking Dead Talk. I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. And coming at you the low tech way, I'm Brian. Although you probably won't be able to tell because I'm still recording things normally normally the way that I record. Um, but uh, I have no internet at home. My modem is, has decided that it no longer wants to participate in daily activities. So <laughs> I am out until the cable man comes tomorrow afternoon. Mm, anyway, uh, the dreaded, oh, in this time frame. <laughs> yeah. They show yeah. Up. It's well, it wasn't too bad between three to five on, on Thursday, we have, um, pest control people and their window is between eight 30 and five 30. So, <laughs> Could be worse. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. All righty. Well, let's get on with this episode. Um, We'll be covering The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 23, titled Family. We did not get any feedback to cover for last week's episode, so let's move forward. Uh, This episode was written by Magali Lazzarano and Eric Mountain and Kevin Dybolt, directed by Sharat Raju. Description on AMC Plus was the Alexandrians and the prisoners head back to the Commonwealth to confront Pamela Milton. Meanwhile, a swarm approaches the city. Ooh. And we saw how the Commonwealth dealt with that. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, LT, what did you give this episode? I gave this episode a 9.8. This this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> oh, so true. Uh, well, I gave it a 9.8. Dude, stop. Or, yeah. <laughs> My best Mercer voice. <laughs> okay. That's what that was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, Brian, what did you give this episode? I combined it with uh, something she said along with something she did. So 9.8, protect the estates so I can shoot Judith. <laughs> okay, don't do any of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> Judith. Judith's been shot just like her brother. Yep, she's following in the long... St- Footsteps. Well, not in the eye. I, hopefully. Not not <laughs> quite like her brother. <laughs> well, no, but well, okay, yeah. I guess Carl's been shot twice at this point, or was tw- shot twice. Um, true. Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. I have to pontificate on that point. Okay. Well. All right. Well. Fantastic episode. Yep. It's very good, and uh, just one more left. Ugh. All right, well, let's get into our listeners' ratings. Um, our first one comes from Glennis from Toronto, and she says, 8 out of 10, the armed and the armless. <laughs> oh, good one. Yes. Renee from Fairburn gives a 10 out of 10. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> Frack, I guess. <laughs> Mike from Asheville says, 9.5, my girlfriend is coming back. <laughs> Who's his girlfriend? No, it's what Mercer said. Oh, okay. 
to okay. Max. That makes sense. Yeah. We're not yeah, we're not talking about uh Mike's girlfriend. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Ivan from Minnesota gave it a 9.2 out of 10. The Walking Dead is back. Yep, 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 it is. And it's <laughs> got one more episode left. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you, listeners, for your um, ratings. That takes us into our awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. All right. Our first awesome sauce comes from Glennis from Toronto. And she says, Eugene is now firmly out of stage two after uh, taking out that Commonwealth trooper. Good on you, Eugene. Eugene stated to Abraham Abraham in The Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 14, twice as far, that he was far into Stage 2 when he was in the hospital bed in Alexandria after his tangle with Dwight, when Denise got shot. And yet another carry involved with Daryl, Abraham, Abraham, and Rosita carrying Eugene back to Alexandria to tend to his wounds. Yep. I kind of agree that Eugene did. Yep. I guess firmly step out of stage to do this episode. <laughs> he did. Um, next up, we have Ivan from Minnesota who said, Lydia gets bit and loses her arm. Walkers climb the walls and get into the Commonwealth, and Judith is yet another Grimes to take a bullet. Literally. Something about that bloodline. And he's got a smiley face. But seriously, this episode was epic and what I've been waiting for. Amazing acting, action, emotion, and I cannot wait for this finale. Here, here. Renee from Fairburn. She has two. She says, Negan seeing the variant walkers for the first time was hilarious. I know it was not supposed to be like that, but Negan's deliverance is so funny to me. And I can't see the emojis. They're just, they just come back as uh, squares. They're rolling on the floor faces. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Second is Judith passing Rick's hat to RJ like Carl passed it on to her was so touching to me. And again, I can't read the emojis. Sad faces. <laughs> yeah. Th this isn't a question of me not being able to tell what an emoji was. I can't see them. Thanks to my yeah. <laughs> screwed up internet today. <laughs> <laughs> they're like what little boxes basically <laughs> they're just they're just white boxes that's it that's all i see <laughs> oh well we'll help you along with the translations <laughs> you'll have to uh all right all right mike from Asheville is awesome he said hot damn they shot judith they had the cojones to throw that at us in the penultimate episode Mercer responds to Princess when asked if he would be on the side when the train gets there. Yeah, one simple word. Strong. And said it in a way I never could. Lydia got bit, then chopped. And Walker's climbing the walls. That was almost comical if it wasn't just cool to see. I was waiting for them to start running. Anything can happen at this point. Yeah. Yep, there's the variants we've talked about, like, where are they going to show up? And it looks like they have. And for sure, uh, yeah, well, I think that's actually, I did put that in my, uh, my awesome sauce, so I'll get to it. All right, thank you, everyone, for your awesome -is. Um So that leads us into ours. Um, I, I'll just go through mine real quick, just because it, it's kind of what everybody else was saying. It was like... Okay. I my awesome was the variance and also was Negan saying basically what the f <laughs> It's funny because like we've seen Aaron and Lydia and uh Jerry like when they were at the little Ren fair, you know, we got we saw their reactions to them and they of course were like, "Oh no, the whispers are like, you know, whatever." And they were the first to see them, I guess. And then now here we are basically this is the counting them as one, this is the second time or second person of our group that has now seen a variant. <laughs> and out of all people, it was Negan. So it was just hilarious to see him sit there with his eyes just like open, like what the heck is going on? <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, that's not what he said though. <laughs> no. Yes. I was, I was editing myself. Um, 
The second was like what uh, Glennis was saying is Eugene kicking some Commonwealth soldier ass because like just seeing him finally like just kind of just basically push Pat that I'm like scared or whatever. Like, you know, they left him, you know, like behind in the room while they all went to go do stuff. And uh, just for him to be like basically kind of almost trapped to be like, what are you going to do? And he totally ripped that helmet off that guy's head just bashed him in the head i mean it was just awesome to see and then then of course he went and helped you know there at the train uh station or whatever or the mm-hmm. what do you call it place so that was cool to see him just basically kicking some butt and then also on top of with the variance parts it's like i do like like I do like the variants and that we're seeing them, but I like the wall climber that we saw. And I like that he falls over after he climbed. And it's like, I like seeing the different walkers. I like seeing these variants, but I'm glad that they're keeping them kind of like their walk, new walker skills, like more rudimentary. So it's not like, Oh, they like turn around and climb back down the wall. It's just like, it's a very, like just a very, we know that they're very, walkers are kind of pretty much just like instinctive in a way where they just like they hear a noise and they'll go over there oh here's some flesh nom 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 so it's like oh yeah they learn to kind of you know get an through an obstacle but when they get to the other side they just fall down and so i don't know i i'm glad that it's just like they're keeping it to simple kind of things and not like giving them like these superpowers you know right so i will take that any day all right, LT, you want to go next? I will. Uh, my first awesome sauce was, you know, Negan's chat with Ezekiel on the train. Um, that to me sort of shows the uh, end of Negan's redemption arc in a lot of ways when he said, you know, I want to leave a better story about me than you guys have had. Mm hmm. You know, and and when he said, you know, you get you are a better person than I am, and I'm thinking, for all the you know the times that I've sort of stuck up for Negan, even though he's still who he is, I think that he's he's definitely come around and got his head right. Just like when he had that conversation with Maggie, that even though that was first. His idea was, look, let's not sacrifice everybody else. Let's just me and you go in and we can get it done. Which, of course, Maggie was still not to the place where she was going to listen to him. And so, you know, you could always take the negative side of that and go, well, if they'd have listened to Negan and just had Negan and Maggie go in, you know, could they have done gotten further and done more? than the bigger group that ended up taking some casualties. But again, it shows kind of where his head is. Um, My next awesome sauce is like you, Kyle. I thought the climbing walkers were pretty interesting. Of course, I will have something to say about what happened with the climbing walkers because it fits into a, a ongoing trend of conversation that I've had in the podcast. But, just seeing that guy in the walker suit, you know, climbing up that pole. And I'm thinking, he's doing a good job at staying walkery, but I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a, a a good change of pace practical stunt where they have to break out the airbag. <laughs> but, well, I'll get to it later. <laughs> because, you know, if there's one, there's bound to be another. Uh it's cool that once Mercer had already decided that this is what was going to happen, he had already had a plan and he's already, you know, invested enough in what's going on that he's got a plan on how to, on how to do things, but he's also got a plan to defend the town from the walkers. So it's funny in a way that even though he has come over to, you know, the side of right truth, and Alexandria, he's also still thinking about the Commonwealth. He's still trying to figure out the best way to keep the walkers from getting to the gates. So that again shows me that he's not only thinking about what's best for his 
friends and his family, but he's also thinking about what's best for the community as a whole. And of course, we find out that even though he had a plan, it didn't work out quite the way he wanted. Um, I thought it was pretty awesome when you saw the light come on over Pamela's head and Pamela figured out what was going on. When, uh, you know, toady sidekick Commonwealth lady was like, well, where did they pull the reserves from? And when she told her, she's like, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a great place to sneak into town. So, you know, Pamela figures out that Mercer's been compromised, even if even she suspected him a little bit, she figured it out. And she also figured out that something was happening. So once Pamela figured it out, then, of course, the next part is Pamela has a plan. And along with Pamela's plan, the fact that not only was she going to uh, set up an ambush for the good guys, but she also is think that part when they breach the wall, she's going, well, we'll just, you know, route them into this middle class neighborhood and we'll protect my house so that all the affluent people will be protected. And then, well, you know, we'll take some casualties, but it'll be fine. You know, we'll take out a few thousand voters. Who cares? We'll get more. <laughs> so if we didn't, if we didn't think she was evil, then we were pretty sure of it. And then, of course, the last part is, yes, Pamela has finally out eviled Beanie Boy and the governor because she shot Judith and she shot Judith and then took no responsibility for shooting Judith. Here's a dumb question. Who's Beanie Boy? <laughs> Beanie Boy, the guy that shot Carl. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, the, the guy the, that the, shot. The, the, oh, the, the, oh, you're talking about. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dinga, Dingus the Beanie Boy, the one that shot him in the eye. Oh, oh. Right. Okay. You know, I know yeah. who you mean now. Okay. Enid's other love interest. Sam was the, the, the stupid one that started crying or whatever. Yes. And, Munchy boy. Yeah, and his his brother was I don't remember. I have to look it up. Yeah. Beanie boy. Because he wore that he always he had that damn beanie on. <laughs> and he got shot. And he got killed. But he shot Carl. Yeah. And you know, the governor killed Herschel. And so I, I'm saying that, you know, Pamela has has risen to the the top strata of walking dead evil now. And I'm finishing my awesome with like Kyle said that, you know, Eugene strikes back that finally, you know, we get to see, uh, we get to see him show a little backbone, show a little courage, get in there and do what needed to be done. You know, Mr. Mullet decided that it was hammer time and he took care of that trooper and, I thought it was very interesting when I saw him running in his raincoat. It was very reminiscent of when Carol was doing her thing at Terminus wearing the poncho. Mm. Just seeing that that figure with the hood on running down the train tracks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And who saved the day but Eugene Porter? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, definitely it was nice to see Mercer having a plan, yep. you know, like, uh, you know, like we know that he had a plan at some point. I think he actually said, I think on the talking dead that he started to come up with that plan when Max wouldn't sign the confession is what he was saying. Um, but of course we also figured it's like, okay, he had obviously been working on something. Um, but that is, it is nice because you're right. It's like Mercer, not only does he care about, you know, trying to make, you know, make the wrong right with like Pamela, you know, that because she's just not a good leader and he's been witness to like some of her shenanigans, but he deeply really cares about the people of the Commonwealth. So now that we have this Pamela saying, hey, let's just protect my house and screw everybody else, like that's not going to play well. And so we'll definitely see see how mercer reacts to that because it's like hey these people he's really there to protect and she's i thought it was interesting that she called him by his first name 
at the, kind of towards the beginning whenever they were like looking for or like I guess they were like looking for Eugene or like oh where did they everybody go whatever and she was just mm-hmm. all like 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 was it Michael is like you know so well, you take care of it Michael or whatever it was just very like okay <laughs> like you're you're calling him by his first name now <laughs> yep uh uh Brian did you have anything I just would say um that overall the episode was great and uh were some terrifying moments there like when Lydia all the stuff that happened to Lydia <laughs> um I thought that was was pretty um pretty good um and uh Negan's reaction to the to the uh to the climbing walker that was that was pretty good um but overall the episode was great and uh I thought it was one of the best episodes we've had in in quite a while um just basically I agree with everything everybody else has said so that's mm-hmm. that's essentially what I've got to say and I would have had more but my internet's been out so that's my excuse <laughs> Blame it on the internet yeah uh well let's hope that's fixed by the time we get to next week <laughs> well it better be <laughs> uh yeah or well we'll yeah we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll pivot and adjust if that's if something comes up for all of us because right this is going to be too big right um all right well cool deal all right well let's then that leads us into our weak sauce you're worthless and weak all right. Well, we got one weak sauce from Ivan from Minnesota, and he s- says, Pamela needs to die. Love the actress, but I sense a mercy prevail. Excuse me. Mercy prevails over my wrath kind of situation. Throw that out the window and give me wrath. <laughs> and then a little devil like emoji. He's like, after all, it's just a TV show. Ha ha. <laughs> yes, I definitely. Am no mercy and I want wrath. <laughs> so I agree, Ivan. That needs to happen. Yes, it does. Yeah. That was all our weak sauce from our listeners. So let's get into ours. Um, I guess LT, you want to start since you're first in the line? Well, I certainly can. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for LT rants about the Commonwealth troops. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a – if this had been earlier uh, in the season, we would have uh, had a little jingle for this. We'd have to have a sounder. <laughs> <laughs> so about the troopies, once again, kids, I'm going to start off with my two derps and a Jeep. Now, as a Jeep owner and as someone who has ridden in uh, – pickup trucks and other vehicles that have had people leap onto the back of them suddenly you're gonna notice i don't care how stiff the springs are in that cj5 if you suddenly have somewhere between 150 and 200 pounds of something clamber onto the tailgate if one is in contact with their senses one should notice and once said occupants of vehicle notice they should look behind them the fact that our two guys were just blithely driving along and you know animated walker leaps into the back and then does the uh ninja crawl up into the back and starts nibbling on the occupants of the vehicle they should have noticed you know that's why you have an assistant driver The driver drives a vehicle. The driver looks forward. The assistant driver is the one who is free to look around and enjoy the scenery. And perhaps, hopefully, warn the occupants of the vehicle if someone has suddenly leapt onto the back of it. I I just was going, you guys are such knuckleheads. Yeah. Uh, No argument. Well, to continue on with that, let's talk about the derp on the wall. Yes. He saw the guy climbing up the pole, and he shot him in the head, and he fell off the pole. But while he is frantically chattering on the radio, the comrade of Climbing Walker 
uh, you know, climbing walker 2.0 managed to shinny up the wall, climb over the railings, and munch on poor derp on the wall. And this goes back to one of my other things. Don't go alone. Troops alone die. Where's your battle buddy? Why wasn't there someone else on the wall? There were two towers. There were two observation posts. How come we only had one body? And I understand Kyle did mention that this is the point where they're, you know, having the big confrontation with, uh, you know, or just post confrontation when Mercer was taken away. Still, don't leave your sentry alone. If there were two of them, then maybe the other one would have seen the guy climbing up the wall and would have saved his buddy. You know, it's a 360 degree world. I've said that before. And he was so focused on talking on the radio as he got eaten. And then, of course, after he got eaten, there's obviously no OSHA in the apocalypse. And to whoever designed the controls for the gate, of course, it was relatively simple for the now munched on trooper to fall heavily upon the console and push the lever so that the gates opened. Haven't you ever heard of safety locks? You know, I was talking to Kyle earlier. Most of the equipment that I've operated that has something like that that you really don't want to activate when you're, say, driving, has some sort of lock. It's got a little pull thing so that you can't operate the lever unless you fully intend to. So, of course, the Commonwealth has some easily defeated, super simplistic gate control (laughs) so that when poor lone knucklehead falls onto the thing, the gate's open. Now, about the gate's opening. This was where I was kind of going, okay, so you have a plan if they get to the wall. Did you ever think that maybe, just maybe, the wall might have a breach? Something might happen? Some poor corpse might fall on the lever controls and open the front door. It's like they didn't have a fallback plan. They didn't have a breach plan. They didn't have any secondary lines of defense. All they had was the big wall. And that's not good, kids. You always have to multi-layer defense. If you have a wall, you have another wall. If you have a wall, you have a ditch. And they have equipment. They could have dug a ditch. It would have been really easy. Right. (laughs) Or at least have a plan. Well, what if they get in? Well, this is what we do. We, you know, we close this gate. We do this thing. Well, and I guess they did. But, you know, I wouldn't want to be in the crappy neighborhood in the Commonwealth now. Because obviously that's their fallback plan. Well, we'll just hem them in and, you know whatever ward she said will hem him in in and i'm just going no you have some plans and uh, when and i can't think of his name was it tyler was the guy that tried to kill pamela earlier that got shot in the train station yeah tyler davis tyler davis tyler durden never it's like <laughs> tyler durden never stand in the open They were going in and everybody was trying to scatter and he just kind of stood there in the middle of the hall, out in the open and went, hey, (laughs) the door's locked. Don't stand in the open. You know, if if you're going to do that, you're still just still once again, like searching the house, searching the boat. when We're doing the alpha episode. Never assume that everything is safe and always assume that you miss somebody and take the appropriate precautions. If you're going into a building in the middle of enemy territory, don't just like go herpy derpy derpy derp and walk right out in the middle of the open so you can get shot. Now, granted, I know, TV show, but (laughs) still. And then I guess the last thing that I'm going to go is that, okay, you know, Pamela's secret toady under Mercer. Mercer wasn't trying to deceive you when he said there was a, a, a herd coming and that you needed to prepare. This wasn't a diversion. This was the truth. And while you're so happy that you've taken him, taken him into custody and you've thwarted this plan to bring down the Commonwealth, this was your opportunity to put more troops on the gate. So besides the fact of Knucklehead falling on the 
the gate controls, I blame you, toady sidekick woman, because you didn't listen to Mercer. And you noticed that she was aghast when Pamela was like, well, we'll just herd them into the lower quarter and you can, you know, guard my house. Yeah. But she yeah. did it. But she did it anyway. I think that that is an example of someone who is really dying to get a promotion. Yeah. <laughs> and and once, once they've gotten the promotion, suddenly they realize maybe they didn't want the promotion after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to get blamed for everything, too. Like, yeah. They're, yeah. You're pick, picking the wrong team. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, her only, her only hope um, is, is to you know, turn things on Milton before the end, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. That's her, that would be her only hope. And whether or not that'll happen, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I agree with you, LT, that she is a little toady. <laughs> yep. Well, maybe not a little toady, but she's, she's a toady. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> um... Yeah, I guess you've you you um picked up on a couple of the th the things that I I guess I would put in as weak. Um I thought Tyler Davis was going to have a bigger role than basically to just be the first person shot. Um so there's that and uh yeah, Toady. <laughs> so, yeah, I I th thought that um that actually, that Tyler, because like, yeah, we thought that maybe he was going to have more of a role. And then there yeah. was that scene with, uh, uh, what was it, Connie, Magna, and, and uh, uh, on the train or whatever. Yeah. And it, it, they kind of played it up as being like, oh, um, you know, it's like someone needs to lead the people. And it was like, well, see, ooh. here's here's the thing, Kyle. They they didn't even give him a full T dog. They only mm -hmm. gave him a partial T dog. <laughs> uh, I guess he I, got. I mean, think about it. They just gave him a little bit more character personality, and then whack. Yep, that's yeah, true. Well, that was just kind of like, don't say anything nice or uh, you know optimistic because that's usually a death sentence. So. Uh, well, there you go. There, there's your addenda to never be the moral compass. compass. <laughs> right. <laughs> never oh, be dude. a ray of positivity. <laughs> no ray of sunshine. <laughs> Not in this world. Oh, goodness. Well, I basically agreed with a lot of what you were saying. And we talked about this before we came on. It was just like, ah, uh, once again, the stormtroopers are just like this total knuckleheads that like how have they ever were able to protect the commonwealth in anything because <laughs> it's just so stupid what they're doing um i mean the two derps in the jeep it was like there was this there was like the scene at the beginning of the episode with them driving by the you know directing the herd and like you see the passenger guy like turn around and look behind and like look at the herd that they were driving so close to. Yeah. And then here we are, like in this scene, like right before it's like they literally like drove like almost like banging into them mm -hmm. and to the walkers, and then they pulled away. But like the walkers were like basically grabbing for the jeep and then they just go forward and i swear i was all like are do they have headphones on like are they just like listening to the, their music and like oh yeah this is all fine and it was just kind of like and you're not even looking behind you to like like what kind of like military are you like you're not doing ba basic common things <laughs> so it was just like okay sure he gets eaten and then that you know caused mercer as to you're, go, like, as you're sitting on. there listening to taylor swift on your airpods <laughs> driving along in the jeep you can't eat. <laughs> oh goodness yes they were just like too into their the latest hits the commonwealth late top 40 uh but then like so on the walker gate uh so 
and it just popped in my mind when like you were talking about it. It was like so before that, like before we see all that happen, there was an outside far shot of the uh that that gate, and there's the guard tower on top. And I remember looking, being like, "Oh, look at the wall! It's like all this like looks like concrete or like cinder blocks or something like that, you know, that they built." And then the only thing I would have to go back to look was like I did not see anything on the outside of the wall of where you could climb up. So it was kind of like, "Okay, well, how did the?" I mean, I guess that one walker was climbing up that little tower thing, so you know, and they and he shot him. But I was saying by where that other guard tower was, I didn't see anything. And I was kind of like, well, then how did that walker were able to scale that wall? So, I mean, I guess I just answered my question because it's like, well, they had something that one of them was climbing up of. So maybe there was one on the other side. I just didn't see it in that shot. So maybe some of the walkers, maybe some of the walkers were from a circus and they made a human tower. <laughs> yeah, they made a human pyramid. Pyramid. Maybe the, the walkers were cheerleaders. Yep. And they like, lifted each other up and that's that's possible that we've got the well, got I mean, new variants i was gonna say now if you recall in that other zombie movie on the big screen with that very attractive guy in it <laughs> uh, the walkers basically breached the wall by just making a mound of bodies that the walkers were able to crawl up and finally get over the wall yeah, so that's, that's why that's why I'm still going for the flying Zamboni brothers. Yeah, that well, they just they just started. I know they did the crocodile Dundee from the train station. He just climbed up on the backs of his buddies and started walking across their heads <laughs> until he could get a running start and jump. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, either way, it's still silly, and that the stormtroopers are basically so inept that they like can't seem to really yeah like they they have tunnel vision and then they're and then they panic and then they're just like oh like i won't look behind me or down i i see something climbing a wall so maybe i should check the other side of the wall you know like down the well, other direction and see you just made me do something else the two guys that were left after derp died in the tower and the gate opened What's the first thing they did? They ran away. They did a mag they did a mag dump and run. Now, if they would have been both of them been a little more disciplined, what you do is a leapfrog. The first guy fires until his magazine is empty, his buddy is behind him. As he's moving, the other guy shoots to cover him. The other guy takes a spot, reloads on the run. When he gets a position, then he gets his buddy and they leapfrog doing a retreat and they, you know, exact a toll on the walkers as they go forward. And hopefully if you are still running and they are walking, then you can at least maintain some distance on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that'll work until you run out of ammo. But no, no. Our guys do the mag dump, break and run away. Yep, they ran home to mommy. And I'm going, <laughs> you know, tisk, tisk. That is, that's still basic process 101. <laughs> no points for you, Mr. Commonwealth. Yep. They just, they really just are really, their only uh, like rule is whatever the plot says. So that's kind of how it is. <laughs> Uh, well, the only other thing, um, that I put on there for my week was, just, again, it was just, like, basically Lydia, Aaron, Jerry, like, the whole, you know, whisper, walker, you know, acting, whatever, that, like, again, I just feel like it's like they, they sh should have had more blood and guts on them, like, just to make it more believable. You know, it's like, like, or, you know, like we've said before where it's like, oh yeah, like w w if you just shot like two walk or two, uh, uh, recently dead soldier walkers or what, you know, it's like, then search them, get supplies, you know, it's like, you know, they, they obviously had a gun or whatever, you know, it's like, 
that would be something you would always need to be like, hey, let's see what this thing has. And like, oh, more bullets. Yay for me, you know, or, oh, I don't have a gun. They have a gun. Yay. And it's just the whole believe believability part of it. It's just like we've here we are seeing Aaron, Lydia, Jerry, uh, and then the other two, I forgot their names. But like, you know, we get the whole act of like, oh, yeah, this is how they blend in and they're able to walk with the walkers. But it's like, but their faces are completely like clean. You know, yeah. it's like we've yeah. seen on like Fear and like, you know, earlier seasons of the show where they're covered head to toe in guts, you know. And then Jerry like leaves and he's like, oh, I'm going to go like whatever, go find them. And like he leaves Lydia and Aaron. But it's like, Dude, like you literally have just l just a parka with just a little bit of like guts just on your shoulder, and it's like they could have at least just put it on their face, and it would have just kind of had that little bit more. It's just like that last scene in the original Ghostbusters when everybody else was covered in uh, <laughs> yeah, marshmallow yeah. sauce except for Bill Murray. <laughs> he had just like a little bit on his face. <laughs> That I know when we started this, it was like you dipped a minute, like a, you know, like a dipped cone. Right. And it seems like now it's like, oh, I've got a little spot here and a little spot there and a little bit on my coat. I'm good. Yeah, I know. And it's just, uh that was Aaron, Lydia, Jerry, Elijah. Yeah. Luke and the girl that I can't remember her name. <laughs> so Elijah. Jules Luke and the girl that I can't remember, Jules, I guess, was the were the other three, and we know that Luke and Jules have gotten back. So now Elijah is still the wild card out there with yeah. Jerry. Yeah, it's just weak that they wouldn't at least like like come on. It's not like you guys, The Walking Dead, is like on a budget. You know, it's like you could just smear some blood on their face, <laughs> like it would have been. That's all you needed. So, it's I, like, it's, it, you know, for God's sake, you can't tell me that the makeup department doesn't have some blood somewhere. <laughs> right. So, I don't know. It's just a little gripe. Just kind of like, come on. Just like. I mean, it's Greg Nicotero, for God's sake. Well, maybe. They maybe. had five. They had five gallons of blood when they cut Lydia's arm off. Yeah. <laughs> then that's where the budget went. <laughs> they didn't have enough. <laughs> Uh, I do have to say that that was a really cool scene, though. That shot, just her getting bit. Blood everywhere. Yes. That was another one of those. I hate to say it. It was right up there. To me, it was still right up there with Mr. Nose Nibble. I mean, when when he got hold of Lydia's arm and was doing the... And it mm -hmm. was like you saw the skin go... I was yeah. like, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was it was gross. It was awesome. And uh, and, <laughs> and and props to her. I mean, good God, that was a scream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it was shocking for sure. So definitely a good scene because I was not that I wasn't I, well, I wasn't expecting it until I saw her reach out, and then that's when I'm like, oh, girl, you're showing some skin. Like, that's not good. And then sure enough, <laughs> she got bit. Uh, all right. Well, that was all our weak sauces. Brian, did you have anything? I don't know if I asked. It, well, I did say things, but I just thought of something else. Um, and that is something we've talked about, the um, Stormtrooper armor. I was thinking mm -hmm. that another Milton made better armor than this Milton did. And that is, if you recall, Milton, who was the governor's like science guy, mm -hmm. the original governor, not this governor, um, made a, an effective anti-walker device uh, or clothing garment using duct tape. So it seems to me that um, these stormtrooper uniforms, if they had been made of duct tape, would be more effective. <laughs> that's all i don't even think i don't even think it's what they're made of i think it's the fact that you know you're wearing your under armor unitard underneath it <laughs> right and if you would deploy the padding effectively you know the gauntlet has 
you know, padding all the way around it, but it's like your shoulder pad and that neck hoop and the other stuff just doesn't seem to get the job done when somebody grabs you and starts trying to go for your neck, which is what I thought that was supposed to be for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like when you take a bite from a canine, you offer him the arm, you know, you stick the big padded part in their face and let them go ang, 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 on it. And then you, I don't know, hit them in the head, stab them with your bayonet, you know, do something instead of just like scream and flail and die and fall on gate switches. <laughs> well, maybe it's just, you know, that's the fashion of this time of the commonwealth so next next season it'll be like oh yeah we lost so many people because they were getting their necks beat bitten so we'll <laughs> create a net guard <laughs> <It'll>, <laughs> oh goodness that's so stupid anyways uh all right well that was all of our week so let's get into our watts what 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 uh, we actually didn't get any watt sauces from our listeners, so that leads us into ours. Uh, Brian, you want to since you got yours in there first, you want to take yours first? Yeah. Um, two things that were involved with Lydia. Um, one with well, I guess this is sort of a Lydia thing, sort of not. Um, with the line just separated from Lydia and the rest of them. Well, of course. Uh, Jerry is going after Elijah, which makes me worry about Jerry as well. But um, with them being separated and Lydia, I'll say possibly surviving the bite slash amputation. And I say possibly because I don't know how clean that knife was. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't say she's out of the woods at this point, but I wonder the next time we see Elijah, if it will be as a walker, um, I don't, I don't have high hopes for him, uh, surviving this. So there's that. Yeah. Um, and then something that I, uh, wanted to mention, and that is that, um, there was a clip where we see Lydia looking at some walkers in the background and she kind of like made kind of like a it was almost like a a light went off in her head um and then um i i I don't remember what happens next but the reason why i don't remember is because i saw this clip um just prior to us recording uh from was on the the walking dead, uh, Facebook page, like the actual AMC walking dead Facebook page. And it was a little video that showed me something that I didn't actually notice from the episode. And that was when Lydia saw those, those walkers in the background, she realized that they were people. I was like, people, I didn't see this. So I kind of had to put a, a what in here because I didn't, uh, I, I didn't clue into this. So, and I'm still skeptical, but since it's on an official AMC Walking Dead kind of thing, I guess um, it's gospel. So I guess they were people. The question is, are they whisperers or are they something else? Or was that maybe, um, no, I guess it couldn't have been Jules and and uh, what's his face? Um, Luke. Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have been Jules and Luke because they they had just gotten um separated. So I don't I don't know who it could be. Maybe it's the Commonwealth edition of the Whisperers, the Mumblers. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. No, so. you don't. Yeah. But you're right. Like but it since it is since they posted it on the yeah, because I saw that when you posted it, I'm like, oh, okay. Um yeah. It's Rick but, and Michonne but, you know, from The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, they're they're, hi- they're hiding, trying to make their way back. But I do remember her looking at that walker in that episode. I don't know, it was like a couple episodes ago. Um, and she did look at it and was all like, and it, and like 
I, I just remember the part it was like the walker was on the ground and then it was around the face. So the, the face did look a little like it was a skin over something else. Yeah. But I don't know if that, I don't know if that was just a play on like, well, that's what she would see, but they're actually just de- dealing with variants or something. I don't know. But cause you know, if the whispers somehow come into this, which that would be, you know, I mean, they're still out there. We know. So it's like, they're not gone. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if that comes through next week. Indeed. All right. Uh, I guess LT, do you want to go with yours or I can go with mine? Yes. I just have one. Okay. Go for it. Why is it? It seems that every Jeep that the Commonwealth owned is made out of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the fuel that they use. It's like, they're not, you know, they're not Ford Pintos. I, I don't <laughs> expect them to explode in a ball of fire if they have an accident. Top secret. But after, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. After Derp and Derp got bitten in the Jeep, you know, Mercer hears this, you know, earth shattering kaboom and sees the huge plume of black smoke in the distance. And I'm thinking, you know, and, and it was a CJ5. It was an older Jeep because you notice the one that, uh, the one that Mercer had was a newer Jeep. Yeah. That this apparently the stunt Jeep is the old Jeep. Yeah. There were various, there, there were, you know, you, you, and you can tell because with, I think with every generation of Jeep, they get a little bit bigger and they get a little bit bigger and the grills are a little different and yeah. the fenders are different. Yeah. And, you know, something I, I realized when we were just talking about this, that uh, do you realize all three of us own Jeeps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. We're just p- part of that Jeep family now. <laughs> yeah. We are we are a Jeep podcast. <laughs> Maybe we should do a Jeep podcast. <laughs> it's a thought. Yeah. I bet you that would be, uh, there would be people that would listen to that. <laughs> anyway uh yeah down here for sure um yeah it's it's just interesting because there's always an explosion it always seems to always be one it's like that maybe he had a grenade and it was he was trying to throw it or somebody threw it into them but anyways yeah it's just well i mean come on it's we i did it's silly it's we like did. okay so we're riding in a Jeep and we get attacked by a walker. And the first thing you think of is to pull out a grenade. <laughs> well, maybe you had one. I'm throwing, on his- I'm throwing you out of the Jeep because it goes back to, <laughs> it goes back to the old rule of running away from a bear. You don't have to be the fastest. Just don't be last. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I know. I just and I'm to sorry, say, like, That's Kyle, where the explosion came from. A, a grenade, a grenade is, is, is not a personal defense weapon in this situation. Well, no, I know. I was just saying that that's where the explosion came from. Maybe he had a grenade on his like belt and then it fell off or something. Or It's like the classic James Bond movie thing. The bad guy <laughs> goes to pull the pin out and he gets bumped and drops it and drops then flails it. around madly in the floorboard <laughs> trying to throw it out of the Jeep. And then boom, I don't know. there you okay. go. Okay, okay, smarty pants. Then maybe the smart walker had a grenade. That could be variants maybe, with weapons. Maybe, maybe he's the smart walker suicide walker. Yep. We still haven't seen the walker that picked up the knife yet. No, we didn't. So I don't know if that's going to come into play. So they, they, they're, they're, they might not have a grenade, but they have a knife. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, it's yeah. You're like, okay, of course there's an explosion from that came from how, because that Jeep is very volatile. (laughs) Maybe it's the gas that they've made for them that they're just highly flammable uh um i added i just well okay i kind of started to like question why i was like i wrote this because then also they talked about i think they talked about something like that on talking dead um about pamela shooting uh judith and then freaking out about it but my first thing came to mind was just like okay so was this pamela's first 
so so called kill, even though she didn't kill Judith, she, she shot her. Um, her first human. Yeah, though, right. And so it's like she, uh, yeah, because then she freaked out and then was like basically turn the blame on them. It's like, oh, you guys right. caused well, this. And it's blah, a kid, blah, blah. too. It's a kid, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, shooting an adult's one thing, but shooting a kid, something else. Yeah. Well, but it just kind of made me think, it's like, well, okay, well, yeah, that would make sense for Pamela, obviously. She's the big baddie, but yet she has all her minions be able to do all that kind of stuff. And it's not like that we don't know that Pamela knows how to shoot. You know, she knows how to shoot guns. You know, we've seen her with it when her, her and Maggie went, you know, hunting or whatever. But, um, you know, it was just, I don't know. It just, it, it, to me, it just kind of gave a little insight maybe to her character that, you know, she's all talk but no bite because she's got other people that will do that kind of stuff for her. And I guess she did. She had Lance Hornsby basically do a lot of the getting your hands dirty and then she never yep. did. So seeing her freak a little bit about like seeing that, you know, she was shooting, I guess, aiming for Maggie, but you know, she well, ended up shooting. Yeah, she Judith. was aiming for Maggie and Judith did the uh, you know, did the Kevin Costner bodyguard move on her? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. It was it. it, it and, just is a qu- question. And of course, you know, the sidebar to that is obviously the hardened veteran uh, shooters that she had with her. Everybody stopped shooting when Judith got shot. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I think. That that was the whole source. I think of her reaction was that. Yeah. You know, she shot now, Judith. She was horrified at shooting a kid, you know? I hate I hate to say it, but if they stop shooting, that would be a prime opportunity for me to keep shooting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the good guy. I can do that. Yeah. But because because then what did they do after Pamela had her freak out and delivered her lines? Then they went ahead and fired up the balcony and ran out the door thanks to eugene of course that's after after the uh fire extinguisher trick right yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah that's i was gonna say pretty pretty harsh way to you know to stop a running gun battle just to shoot a kid mm-hmm. but yeah well maybe the rest of them were like shocked they're like oh look well uh, well <laughs> we're, we're killing uh, the adults but you shot a kid bad yeah <laughs> Uh, and then my other watch so is more of just kind of an observation, but it was just like, I noticed that, so the walkers that like, so whenever our people get kind of like trapped in the Commonwealth, like seal them in and then let the walkers basically kind of get into their little, what alleyway that they're at. And so then of course, you know, Daryl has Judith and they're trying to get around that, that one corner or whatever they get there. But then the horde of walkers basically kind of trap Negan and, you know, some of the others. And I just noticed though, that it was kind of like, so the walkers like, so Judith like basically looks up and does her little daddy thing, but then she like turns her head over and then they show Negan and them basically getting pushed back by the walkers. But then what I noticed was just like, okay, the walkers like looked very just more like new, like their clothes seemed all pretty decent. Like there wasn't really like, it it just didn't come off as like, oh, these are like old decrepit walkers of like forever, you know, like they, it was just like they're the pants and clothes. Like I, I get that they just, they probably, it's like, you know, these are just the, the, you know, they're walker actors and then they, you know, the wardrobe just, here's some jeans, here's some pants, blah, blah, blah. Smart walkers shop at the Gap. Yeah. But I mean, it just was another what kind of was like, well, uh, maybe like at this point, maybe that- this is, th- maybe this is a bunch of the people that Pamela disappeared. So they haven't been walkers that long. Well, I true, and that made the question is like, okay, well, then where did all these walkers in this herd come from? You know, and it's like, I don't know. I I just thought it was interesting. What was it? What was it? Area two or alternate two. two or whatever the other place was. Oh, outpost or no? Or, oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Wherever the wherever the train was originally going. Or designation two or whatever. Designation yeah. two. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So I don't know. I just it's it's 
another one of those like quality moments of like okay we're like like or, or just like attention to detail kind of thing where it was kind of thinking like you know okay where are the like where did, if these walkers are like fairly new or their clothes are still pretty intact i mean even the the wall climbing walker had like nice boots on <laughs> so it's like okay i just makes me think it's like where did these come from like what other communities are out there that got overrun that got eaten and then they ended up turning into the herd which that pamela was like basically using as a you know to get people to go to that you know get put back in their homes so i don't know it was just you know they just it's like yeah you could have roughed them up some more maybe like you know but at this point it seems like if they're anything that's been around for 10 years then like they should be almost naked <laughs> like they're just like clothes don't last that long and well they should be almost naked and probably be a lot more beef jerkier if you want to be technical about it no, no right and it's like we don't really see that so i don't know it was yes a question be like okay maybe these are a bunch of pamela's people that she put to, you know killed off or whatever but it was it's like okay you got a herd you got all these walkers and they all just pretty much still have pretty nice decent pants that are not yeah and boots so that they can climb walls so anyways i just thought it was kind of a what <laughs> that's right and walker fashion sense <laughs> by kyle mcadams yes <laughs> they should should have at least two like holes in their jeans or something instead of like a nice actual corduroy there you go all right all right well that was all then for our what sauces so let's go into our what the hell or oh hell no sauce oh hell no all right well we got one from renee uh, and she said, I'm not understanding how Jerry is able to walk out of the RV like that without getting bit. Thinking face, thinking face emoji. Agreed. But he's got his bloody poncho on, so that was enough to, you know. We've seen that before, I think, you know, where it's like someone's left. I'm not sure if it was fear or something. I mean, we've seen it before, and it was like... They open the door, and I guess since they smell and they don't, you know, they're they're still kind of hidden from the walkers. That the walkers are not going to like recognize them as lunch. And we kind of saw that though too with uh, uh oh, the two ocean siders, which I already forgot their name. <laughs> I need to put those down. But like, so whenever they went into. Yes. So whenever they first got to the RV and went inside that, you know, they were trying to get in, but then the herd was kind of pushing them back. And it was kind of like, well, you're like, like they're pushing a walkers like on you, like pushing against you. And you're like reaching back and like making some movements that seems to be like, oh, now you're giving up your, you know, like you're you're giving up your like disguise and you wouldn't think that a walker wouldn't like one bit Lydia's, you know, arm and was able to say, Oh, look at that. I see some, you know, some skin that like even pushing back against the walker, like that would make it be like, what's going on. So, I mean, I don't know. It just, it's just, you, they have enough of that invisibility cloak on that. I guess walkers just do not like even, see them or smell them or do anything so it's like you can kind of get away with it i guess i don't know it was good for the plot he has to go go save everybody um all right uh that was our only listeners um oh hell no sauce so let's go into ours uh B brian do you want to just give yours first well it's not really mine but i i thought i would uh <laughs> convey one from a former host of this podcast, Ruthie, <laughs> who told me <laughs> that um, she doesn't like the climbers. In fact, how she said it was, I'm really not down with the whole walkers climbing bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, yeah. She, she not... 
she not like it because she thinks they're stupid or she doesn't like it because they freak her out? <laughs> well, no, I think well, she don't. doesn't like it because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a long stretch, you know, considering that we've had, you know, 11 seasons and we haven't really seen walkers like this since episode two of season one on this show. Right. So, right, right. um, it's it's a bit of a stretch and i agree you know but i think they did it largely because we're going to probably see them uh in the daryl dixon show whenever that comes Mm -hmm. um and i don't think it's ever been like confirmed but you know highly inferred that we will if it's being shot in france and supposed to take place in france and you know and we saw the French zombies. So, um, yeah. Anyway, just just to uh, to go with that. Yeah, she doesn't like the climbers, and I know others don't either. So I feel felt that this would be a good place to put this. So yeah. <laughs> go ahead. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of agree. It's just you know they they are. I, pushing it through yeah kinda... my my take on it is it would have been better if we had kind of seen them every once in a while um prior not you know not go from season one to season season 11 without seeing them i think if we had you know seen a couple here a couple there um that would have been better and because then you could have said Oh my goodness! There's a whole bunch of them. You know, this is the most we've ever seen in one place. You know, but right, right, right. Such as you no, know, totally, just totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, well, I I had just a one, and it was more of like just because it's like not that I'm like like a, well, I don't know. I guess it's just it's it was how I feel. It's like when Pamela was directing her soldiers to protect the estate and then leave everybody else to fend for themselves, and I was just like, "Oh hell no!" Because she better get taken out now, <laughs> because she does not deserve any kind of a Rick Grimes mercy like Negan or anything. That she must die because this is just like to me it was like that crosses the line. That makes you like evil 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 like there's nothing like yeah you're we better see uh, like blood and guts from her face (laughs) and body (laughs) oh goodness anyways um how do you really feel oh no Kyle oh no (laughs) Kyle (laughs) I I mean I want her I want her to die with in with an intact brain case and then I want her to come back as a walker, and then I want to kill her again. <laughs> I like okay, that idea. I will take that, too. Yeah. I like that idea, too. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Well, let's move on so we can get to our sad and aw sauce. Aww. All right. Well, we got one from Renee from Fairburn, and she, she gave us sad and an awe. So I will start with her sad. And so she says, sad is Pamela's bald headed ass picking up that gun and shooting Judith and then trying to blame it on our people makes my blood boil. People like her are always blaming someone else for their hateful ways. Cuss, cuss, cuss. Uh, And then Pamela telling the guard to direct the walkers into the lower wards in order to protect the wealthier estates. This is what I'm talking about when I say there's always going to be someone her, uh, her, someone that thinks they're superior than others. How can you be that self-righteous? I will never understand a person that thinks like that. I roll, I roll. And then her awe is Mercer calling Princess his girlfriend. Some heart emojis. And then Lydia trying to save her boo. And then got bit. All right. Thank you so much, Renee. Um, can't disagree with the Pamela. She's horrible. Anyways, um, all right, what's next? Okay, Ivan from Minnesota says, Man, that scene between Aaron and Lydia was powerful. Also, Daryl yelling no and carrying Judith. Wow. Mike from Asheville says, All the talk about Michonne and Rick, Judith just wants her family back together. 
Then after waking up from being shot, all she says is dad. That was kind of, uh, kind of sad. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. It's, we've seen so many times where it's like, you know, Judith being the father figure to, Ju- or Daryl being the father figure to Ju- Judith and even Carol, you know, it's like she has all these people, you know, around her and, you know, they're a family and, you know, it's definitely sad that here she is and Daryl's the one that's carrying her, trying to find a place to get her help. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone, for your sad and awes. Uh, so that takes us into ours. Um, I'll just do mine first just to get through it because it's just kind of some of the same what other people said. But um, I well, one was <laughs> this wasn't necessarily I don't know if it was like sad other than I just kind of chuckled was in the beginning. So Judith's doing her monologue and then she's talking about like Lori and she's like, Oh, I didn't ever get to like know my mom, Lori. And I thought it was sad because she also never got to know her real dad, <laughs> which is Shane. <laughs> no. uh, I don't know if, I no, don't know if she's no. been told about Shane. <laughs> I, I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe it. I, I don't want. I don't want her to be of uh, Shane Spawn. <laughs> no, I know. But she's. It's just. I don't know. It was just the first I heard Lori's name in a long time. So I was kind of like, "Oh yeah, that's right. You're dead. Yeah. You're dead." Hey, everybody always said that, but the the more time has passed, the more I say, "No, no, no, no. Yeah. Can't be." can't be so that's that's my belief anyway (laughs) yeah of course it can be but i don't want to think about that that i know well that's where it was my i kind of put my lol at the end of that because i was just like okay it was just we don't want to think that but it's just still it was just judith talking about Lori, and then that's the first thing that popped in my head (laughs) Um, then Negan telling Ezekiel that they are all better without him. Like that whole exchange and just like Negan basically just telling Ezekiel, it's like, you know, I'm like, I was trying to save all you. It's like, it wasn't about me and was something I can gain. Um, you know, it's just seeing Negan get to this point, you know, and it's like, you know, he's come a long way since, you know, we knew him way back when he was evil Negan. Uh, so I don't know. It was just, it, it, it was sad and awe at the same time. Um, and then of course, Judith and Carol and Daryl, they were talking about Carl and, you know, it's gosh, you know, they're throwing all the names and like the callbacks and like just thinking about it. And also it's sad because it's like, we were never given that story, you know, that like they didn't continue, you know, like when Carl, when they killed Carl off, you know, it was like, we knew that like they were changing things up and that was going to change kind of the trajectory of what, you know, the comics, you know, kind of were leading the show a lot. Um, so it's just sad. It's like, you know, Carl and Judith, like if Carl was still here, like what kind of like dynamic with that? I mean, would it be like a Carol and Daryl kind of thing? You know, that's like, big brother little sister you know like the badasses and like you know, like going going to go take on you know all the evils of the world i mean it it could have been really really cool but yeah it's just like it 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 didn't happen and you know they're going with it this route which i think judith in my mind if we're talking about comic stuff is kind of like she replaced basically carl and then uh, Daryl is kind of one of the ones replacing Rick, and so that story I think is going to continue. But it's just like they, re- you know, they changed the characters. Um, but it could have been so much better or interesting if we still had Carl. And then Mercer calling his princess his girlfriend—that's a big awe because I don't know if he said it multiple times this episode, but it's just 
funny that it, it's it's an awe moment, but it also is kind of funny that it's just like he was talking to Max, like, "Oh, my girlfriend's coming to save us." <laughs> oh, my girlfriend, you know, she <laughs> it's like I don't know. It just you'd be like, "Oh, princess is coming," or like, or you know, like I don't know. It's just it's very very bro like. It's like my girlfriend's coming. So everybody, we're gonna be saved. <clears throat> and then I th- mentioned this before. It was just the whole. Connie and Kelly and Magna and I'm talking to t- Tyler just saying like oh yeah it's like you like you know you stood up for pa- to Pamela you know the people have need someone to be able to look up to and it was just like ah not good no hope no sunshine and sure enough he got shot and he's dead so it was sad he, he didn't get to live very long <laughs> uh, all right well that was all my sads and awes uh, LT did you have any I have one is watching Daryl tote Judith around, and it reminded me of when Beth got killed in the hospital and Daryl was carrying her around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like whenever he ca- didn't get like, carry her out of the hospital. Yep. Block, block, whatever was it, ch- town or whatever it was called. Slap town. Just, just seems to me that Daryl has a thing for carrying, you know, shot floppy women <laughs> but it was very evocative of that oh uh, all right uh brian did you have any sad and oz to add otherwise we'll move on um just i guess the whole lydia um uh what's his name uh elijah i wanted to call him ezekiel <laughs> both e anyway Biblical yeah. names <laughs> starting with E. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought that whole thing was sad and the way that she she was acting, how she, you know, wanted to go get him basically at her what pro- probably would have been her own cost, you know. Um so I thought that was was pretty sad. So you know, and I know obviously the, Judith getting shot. I mean, what else can you say about that? Uh, your point, LT, about the way Daryl was holding uh, Judith was very similar to the way he was holding Beth. Um, very true. Mm-hmm. Very true. And that one made me sad, and this one makes me sad. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if we're if that's all our sats and awes, let's get into our feedback. We can talk about. We're done talking. Time to listen. All right. Well, we got some voicemails. Um, and we got one from Renee, one from Dieta. And so the first one we will start with is Renee. Hi, guys. This is Renee from Fairburn. I am so sorry. I seriously thought today was Monday and not Tuesday. And I have no idea how I thought that. I don't know where my brain is today, but I'm just assuming because it's raining here in Atlanta and I've been in my bed all day just relaxing that I kind of I got thrown off. So I'm so sorry. But I know that Judith Grimes is not dead. There's no way that they will allow her to die and not have her and her parents and her brother to be back together again. It's just no way. I'm not even going to think that at all. I don't think The Walking Dead would do that because I, like, I just, that's not going to happen. She's not dead. And Eugene, I'm so happy that they allowed Eugene to man up. I'm so happy that they didn't allow him to start blubbering and carrying on um, like he normally does. I'm gl- I, I'm glad that they allowed him to, um, you know, do what he's supposed to do. Man up, you know. Like I said last week, I just don't feel like that. You, the, the way that they keep portraying Eugene as if he's just so super scary and he so does, and uh, uh-uh. d- l- allow him to do the same thing as you as um Negan and Negan. Um, speaking of Negan, man, when he was talking to King Ezekiel when he said that, and Maggie was sitting there listening. I mean, the redemption, I mean, is his arch is, is, is his arc. I'm sorry. is freaking amazing to me. It really is. You, I have no choice, but to, but to forgive him. I mean, cause he's remorseful and I think that's all I really wanted. And I see that he's so remorseful and I think he was already, um, 
remorseful about things he did. But I really think now that he has a wife and he has a daughter that that's, you know, allow him to see things in a different light. Because when you have children, you do totally look at things differently. You really do. And I'm so happy that they got the kids. And I'm assuming that the kids were at um back at Alexandria, Alexandria, they, they they were just not in the room with Herschel because they got all of them again, except Coco. So I'm trying to figure out where's Coco. Where's Coco? But um yeah. Um but Negan, he has the best freaking lines ever. Seriously. <laughs> I rewind that back so many times just to hear Negan say, What the hell? It's like Negan, like, what in the hell is this? Well, we got walkers that are uh uh climbing and stuff. I know he was like out me he, in total shock. Like, what what the uh, amazing. But Negan has the best lines ever. And um Alpha's daughter, I can't think of it right now, her name, and I can't even, Elijah, her little boyfriend, Elijah, she was trying to um, um, save him, and she got bit, but I'm thinking to myself, like, if the walkers are accustomed to, uh, move, accustomed to the, the variant walkers moving and bending and doing this and that, why didn't they just think that that was just another variant walker? I don't know. And then the way that Jerry, uh, please don't let anything happen to Jerry, just walked out the door. Like, why didn't they automatically try to attack him? I'm, I'm, I'm just so lost, but I, I applaud, um, uh, Alpha's daughter because I can't think of her name right now because I'm all messed up. That, um, she, they amputated her arm just like that. Oh my God. With no pain medicine whatsoever. I can, I mean, when I tell you I cannot deal with pain, the, I mean, I cannot deal with pain at all. Like a toothache, nothing. I cannot deal with it. And for her to not have any type of pain medicine, and then she wakes up and talking about she needs to go get a larger girl. If you don't have several seats and sit down side acting like a duck, seriously, have several seats. <laughs> but um, and yeah, I don't want anyone to die. I really don't. I don't want anyone to die. I don't feel like anyone has to die for the episode to um not be a good episode. I feel like if every, everyone lives, it's still going to be a great episode. I mean, it really, it really is. I don't, please don't let anyone die. I just, I don't want anyone to die and, except freaking Pamela. She has to die. She has to die a horrible, horrible, horrible death. Horrible. When I say a horrible death, she has to die a horrible death. All right. I'm getting ready to post my feedback on the Facebook page. And again, guys, I'm so sorry. I hadn't, I, I mean, I was sitting here all day doing nothing, freaking nothing, sitting here reading, um, House of Dragons, Fire and Blood, whatever it's called, watching CNN, just sitting here doing nothing. I'm thinking I'm going to do it tomorrow that tomorrow, I don't know what I'm thinking. I, I'm so sorry, guys. Please forgive me. All righty. Peace and love. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Renee. Uh, yeah, that's why I posted on the Facebook group because I was noticing before we were going to start recording that I was like, "Hey, we don't have um, voice or feedback or voicemail." Usually, I get those, and so I uh, tagged them and was just like, "Hey, guys, like, got some time still." So I'm glad you made it, though, Renee. Um, and as always, you know, it's like I'll try to do my best to. <laughs> remind you again if I don't see it already up there. Um, I only have one thing to say after that. Horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Horrible. But I I agree with you. It was rainy and cold and slate gray sky today. And I I had to I had to think that it was Tuesday. So I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm always mixing up my days too, um, but I knew about today just because I had it on my calendar. <laughs> and yes, it's, we're dealing with cold and wet, and it's I had to go out there and cover some of our beds with the fabric or whatever, and it was just like I need new gloves; they're not warm enough. Um, all righty, well, uh. I was just going through, yeah, a lot of the stuff you said was really, really good. Um, yeah, I thought so too about the kids that the kids must have been at Alexandria because we obviously, uh, uh, saw her, you know, they, they found Herschel, but then it was kind of like, well, we never saw where Lydia or not Lydia, uh, where, uh, Judith was, but of course she shows up this episode. So it's like, well, yeah, okay. They were, were there, but yeah, Coco, we do not see. And we know that that's, 
I don't know if you saw Talking Dead, but there was they did a little clip um, for next episode, um, like they usually do, and it was pretty much answers that question. <laughs> Where is Coco? Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't get to see it. Yeah, uh, I would definitely check it out. I was. I was sent away, and I didn't get to see Talking Dead this week. Uh, actually, for the first time so far, <laughs> I've been, I was able to had time to watch it, and I did. I purposefully watched it. Yeah, uh, I was, and it's depressing to me that the show. You know, Hardwick talked about uh, how much fun he's had and how great the show's been for him, and how it got started, and. I think that it was probably one of the best Talking Deads they've had in a very long time. It was good for sure. Oh, and next week should be even sadder. <laughs> um, uh, I was thinking it's like um, she mentioned about like Lydia and the variants, and like the I don't know if the variants are like the Walkers know variants like that so it's like i just i thought with lydia reaching out trying to you know like grab onto her boo and then you know she had her arm exposed and i just kind of assume it's like that's definitely would draw some attention and she was making noise and she was close to the walker so yeah it was just kind of like that's not an you know she she was yeah, making she had an, her arm stuck out and she was going no, 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 no. yeah like so, so it just kind of made her an easy, easy target. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, I don't want anybody else to die, but I f I'm afraid that that's just kind of par for the course that they're not, there's, we're going to see, I mean, I guess we could not have any of our characters deaths, but it just seems like that's going to happen. This We're about to go into this big battle you know, the big boss battle with Pamela now that she's at her estate, um, that it, it just seems like there's going to be something like whether or not it's like an accidental death, like someone like accidentally got in the way of a, somebody trying to shoot or something you know, or whatever, or who knows, but I just feel like someone is, um, and for sure Pamela has to die. Like that's just unacceptable if she does not <laughs> at this point yep but as for everybody else i'm it's kind of like uh it's you know i fear for all of them outside of the ones that have spinoffs that something could happen i yeah. mean lydia could it's just like oh yeah 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 judith could lydia could um well i mean there there's a anyone who is not named to a particular spinoff spinoff like even you could even think maybe uh carol isn't safe because she was originally going to be on that spinoff and now she's not well maybe they said one reason ends up it's another reason <laughs> you know so <laughs> yeah like we know yeah. maggie negan and daryl are safe but yeah i don't think we know anybody else for sure is said, well, Rick and Michonne, obviously, but they're not in the show right now. So, yeah. right. um, <laughs> beyond that, though, I don't know if anyone is safe. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh. I mean, we can assume the, the things that we can assume are that some of these people are going to stay alive. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of those people are in one of the shows that has been announced or maybe a show that hasn't been announced. Uh, we'll see. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we find out that, you know, like, Ross Marquand or something has uh, joined the cast of Daryl Dixon or whatever. You know, we don't know. Or, yeah, or, like, sh yeah, or, sh or shows up in New York at some point, right. you know, and it's like, ooh, surprise, like, he... Yeah, for whatever reason they're even there for that he came and wanted to tag along, but yeah, the, the many possibilities in that instance. But um, yeah, uh, I don't think I think Judith is is safe. I don't think she's, and actually, I think Mike actually will get into his feedback, and I 
uh, was talking to him on, uh, on the Patreon and he had his theory that he never told us about. And then he emailed me with the theory. And so, uh, we'll get into that because I kind of agree that it's a possible, possible angle that we could see in regards to Judith. All right, Renee did give some written feedback, and she said, this episode is really good to me, and I'm really hoping no one dies and that somehow Rick Grimes is going to be on next week's episode. Yes, I think everybody is wanting that, and Michonne. Um, Pamela is the um, epitome of an evil witch, and then a witch emoji. I really hope Mercer is the one who kills her slowly. Praying emoji, praying emoji. That's going to be interesting because we've talked about this is like, who would it be? And, you know, it's like, I, I know, uh, I know like they were talking on the talking dead that, you know, it's like Maggie and Pamela are basically like, you know, the two, like, cause like Pamela couldn't sway Maggie to basically come over to her to the dark side with Commonwealth. And if she did, then maybe none of this would have happened, which I mean, that, that's a question, but you know, it's like Hill Hilltop. And then just, you know, Maggie was the one that was holding out and then whatever Maggie said, then that's what Oceanside did. So it's like, you know, we know that Pamela does not like, uh, uh, um, uh, Maggie. And so it's kind of like, that would be interesting of like, that's who does it. But then now we're also kind of have Rosita where it's like, you took my baby and, <laughs> and we've seen how Rosita is just like, Oh, she can be fierce. So, you know, it's like, maybe she's the one that like does it. Um, so I don't know. I, I, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and it better play out. So <laughs> we'll see that. Uh, she goes, shout out to Michonne, Diane, um, in the Wakanda movie. Uh, she killed it and she slayed every look on the red carpet. But now she needs to bring her bald head itself. She was called that in the movie. Home. Put those dreads back in her head, her hair, and let's get it popping again. Shrug, shrug. This is going to be an emotional episode. Thanks again, guys, for all you do. And because of you guys, I've met some awesome people, including yourself, and it feels great to be a part of such a diverse group of people. Peace and love, and then some peace emojis. Thank you, Renee, as always. And, uh, well, we actually then got one from Dieta, so let's get into her voicemail. Hi, guys, this is Dieta. <clears throat> Coming from Detroit. I totally forgot about feedback, too. Damn. <laughs> but- um, I guess I'm gonna try to leave a voicemail. Hopefully, I can get it in, which I know I'm probably super late. I just remember today was Tuesday. Um, but basically, the last episode, yes, I agree with Renee. <laughs> this episode was explosive, and it was everything we had been wanting our show to be for the longest. I rated it ten out of ten. Uh, I feel like I didn't know last week was next week is the last episode, so. I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's so much they still haven't, you know, uncovered for us, you know, with the Supernova 2.0 Walker. And I know you guys previously said that they were doing, you know, turning donuts, but I understand that. But I think these are different because they, yeah, they turned donuts in the first season. And, you know, remember, you know, the Turner donut, but climbing walls, picking up rocks, picking up knives, attacking. We haven't seen that. So, it, I don't know if they're going to explain it before it ends. I would love to know and see how this is going to go into the new spinoff. The whole episode was awesome. I'm trying to think of something, anything. Um, just love the takedown. Oh, Judah being shot. That was crazy. It was, everything was just crazy. It all happened, <laughs> uh, so fast. Um, oh gosh, I don't, but we know our people is going to, um, Make sure they take care of Pamela. That's uh, so what I'm looking forward to that. The end and putting putting Pamela to the rest. Um, oh, and then of course the new killer walkers crawling up the walls and stuff. The new breed that's attacking the Commonwealth and they trying to. Um, Pamela's just concerned about her little property or whatever, just her and not the citizens. So it's all about to hit the head. Dang, I can't believe I missed the name. <laughs> but um. 
tease. Next week's is the episode. So did we come up with a way, you know, we can kind of all be live at the same time? Are we just going to watch it? And I don't know. But just want to say, hey, everybody, love the podcast as usual. Um, and I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. And no, don't worry. You got you got it in. So voicemail definitely is always a good way to do it. And that goes for any of our, uh, you know, the spinoffs and stuff that we'll cover after this show. So um, great way to be able to like, get it in there really quick. So thanks for getting it in. Um, yeah, uh, agree. We all want Pamela to be put to rest. So we should hopefully get that next week. Um, uh, picking up on what she just said, we're still working on what, possibilities we have for watching it all together live um it's hopefully we can do something um but yeah we're still working on it so just keep up on the facebook for that goes for everybody if we were able to pull something off that will be where we will post it um i know some like i know i was talking to mike he isn't he said he would not be able to do something like that but was thinking maybe something like uh kind of like a call-in show after, um, you know, like kind of instead of our podcast, maybe we could, we do like a call-in show and just like basically have, you know, have everybody come in and instead of covering it like we're doing now, we could just all do it together. Um, so we'll try to figure something out, um, that, and yeah, we'll just stay tuned. Hopefully we can do it. Um, yeah, to me that that's probably going to be our best bet because, uh, just a little inside baseball. We tried a test last week to see if we could stream <laughs> live, and it was a miserable failure. Just so <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. knows. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. So yep. So stay tuned if if we're able. If not, uh, we'll just do, if we can figure just, something out, we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, but a but an after show an after show chat. Um, you know, chat sat. Uh, slash episode might be the best way to do it rather than like yeah. a, everybody watch at one time, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm also worried. It's like, we tried doing something like that and then like the internet, something goes out and then like, Oh, but like some people are able to watch it. At, yeah. Like how we're streaming that to each other or something. Yeah. And then all the technical difficulties and then it's like, okay, <laughs> then that didn't work either. So I think I like the idea of the, the call in show. All right. Uh, all right. LT, you want to take um, Ivan? I will. Ivan from Minnesota said definitely my favorite episode of the season. And in a little while, so much amazing and shocking stuff like the old days. And I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I will do Mike's and he goes on and says, this was an incredible uh, penultimate episode. The action, the setup, Pamela showing her true evil walkers in the city. My only concern now is how they wrap this up. They have an entire battle to get through and then a story to end. Um, It's going to be fast paced. And I'm starting to wonder if someone Wink, wink, comes in and saves them all and wipes out the horde. Ooh, interesting. Also, this episode seems to find our group's humanity again. They all remember what they're fighting for, and the weight of their past seems to be showing. And Kyle, I'm not sure if my theory holds up after this episode. I don't know what to think now. Uh, you can say my theory, but for the record, I am not 100% sure now. Uh, so yeah, me and Mike were talking on our three email, um, and he, cause he had mentioned that he had a, th- a theory, uh, was it last episode? Um, and, but then didn't share it. So we were like, okay, well, what's your theory? Uh, so he told me that he says, so we are getting into these intros before each episode with Judith talking. And the perspective is from the future. They have been little hints at that she's telling a story, so obviously she's in a safe place. After taking down Pamela, they clean up and keep the Commonwealth going. Most move back to the hilltop and build that up to be a sister city. 
So no dramatic ending, no big revelation, just setting down or just settling down to be home. It would be nice if Rick and Michonne show up right at the end or even a hint at the CRM to show the country rebuilding. So I don't know the way the storyline with the Commonwealth is going down to the final episodes. I'm worried the finale will feel rushed. They aren't leaving room for anything major. That's why I'm leaning um, towards a non-exciting ending. And I like, I guess, you know, now some of what he's saying is changing because I think we are kind of getting to a, we're going to have a dramatic ending. Um, And uh, the, the thing that I was kind of hint or was thinking about was like they'll there's in comic spoiler, but at this point everybody should probably have heard or something like that. So the comics end, you know, basically with Carl, many I don't know how far if it was like year or years, but doesn't he have like a kid or something and or a child or he's got a you know he basically has a life and he's basically telling the story about his dad to somebody else or to his child or to something like that. So like the comic ends basically in the future, kind of similar to like what we're getting with Judith and these little like tidbits in the beginning. So that's what my, I was thinking that that might be how this ends. <clears throat> it is an extended episode. Um, I did find that out. And so I could definitely see that we get this big battle, all this kind of stuff, but we're going to have, this is the last episode of the series. So I, they're going to give us kind of almost like little flashbacks coming, you know, going back through the seasons, like they've been doing with these little Judith monologues at the beginning and kind of tie it up so that we get this, like we get this in like a nice ending to the show that seeing like our characters, you know, living longer or getting, you know, somewhere down the future, you know, like, you know, like Jerry gets his kingdom 2.0, you know, and stuff like that. So I think that part of that he's kind of thinking might be what we'll see. So I don't know. I, I I think it's holding up somewhat, Mike. (laughs) I don't think it's going to just be non-exciting. I don't think they're rushing it. I think they've planned this pretty well. And I feel like we've, I mean, I, the, you could say some stuff maybe might be, might be rushed, but just how like, Oh, look how easy it is that the Commonwealth soldiers are just, you know, they just fall over at a moment's notice. So the walkers are eating them. And it's like, well, they're moving the story along. So we're getting a lot of this kind of like, okay, I get it. You know? Okay. Whatever. But, um, I think they had this ending, fairly planned out to some degree that like, I don't feel like that it's being rushed and that, you know, I think they're going to nail it and it should be a good, you know, finale. I think we should be, we'll be happy with what we see. So. All right. We've got Glennis from Toronto and uh, we are splitting these up. So I'm going to go first. She says, Aaron, Jerry, Lydia, Elijah, Luke, and Jules, and especially for Lydia, came full circle to being a whisperer, literally, again, with Aaron passing the commands down the line for them to split from the huge herd. The motorbiking walker rustlers put a spanner in the works for the group to split gracefully from the herd by cutting off their escape route. Then, that whole effort of trying to get into that shelter was very clumsy and cumbersome. Why didn't Lydia just let go of Elijah and he could have circled back around? Thank you, Glennis. Thank you. I should have mentioned this in my weak sauce because I thought of this too. Is that like, why didn't she just let him go around? You know, it's a, it's a small trailer, you know, just go around trailer and come back anyway. (laughs) Um, Yes. So I agree with you on that. Though I suppose that was difficult with being swept forward by the herd of walkers. Well, to an extent, but you would think that uh, he would be able to turn back. But anyway, that was that was a point that I neglected to make earlier. So thank you for bringing it up now. The cutting off of Lydia's arm by Jerry reminded me of Rick Grimes cutting off Tyrese's arm in. Uh, TWD season five, episode nine, what happened 
and what's going on. It's sort of the same situation where they're far away from any medical assistance, so infection and that loss of blood is going to be a danger. In Aaron's case, he was closer to medical care, but nonetheless, he was going to be her support pillar if she survives the critical golden hour, as it were. And um, also, I think of Herschel, um, the original Herschel in in this mm-hmm. regard, but of course, it was his leg and not not his arm. But uh, and, but yeah, similar. And Bob. And Bob, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, although I think Bob's uh, arm was, uh, or leg was moved or removed for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> Tainted meat. <laughs> Tainted meat. Anyway, Elijah would still be in that herd a little behind where Luke and Jules were, and Luke and Jules turned up, though He'll need to try and split from the herd, as there's now a risk he'll be shot. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, she goes on, she says, Pamela is like an army general with her knowing the group's point of entry and not taking them out there and then setting the trap for the group and waiting for them to be all in the actual building. And she picks up a machine gun too, getting her hands fully dirty now. This is really serious. And aims for Maggie, her nemesis, who has always shunned and rejected joining the Commonwealth and not brought into the Commonwealth hype ever. Yep. That's why I'm wondering if she might be the one that knocks her off. Uh, She goes on, she says, I thought that this episode Judith would tell Daryl about the chance that Rick Grimes is still alive, and that's the real reason Michonne has not returned. But alas, it wasn't to be. I think it was close as... uh, when she was talking to Daryl about family and him not letting her uh, go with them was crap. Crossing fingers and thumbs, Judith will tell Daryl in the last episode, hoping it's not Judith's last breath. I don't think so. So Judith sees where Pamela is aiming and jumps in front of Maggie and is shot by Pamela. And Pamela instantly regrets it, but of course immediately blames the group. You did this. Ah, uh, no, you Pamela, or not, ah, uh, no, you Pam started it all with your corrupt society. Daryl carrying Judith seemed like a callback to when he carried Beth out of the hospital in The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 8, Coda, after Dawn shot her. And of course, it harks back to Carl when carried by Rick Grimes in The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 2, Bloodletting to the farmhouse, when Carl was shot by Otis, a deer incident. And Season 6, Episode 9, No Way Out, when Ron wanted to shoot Rick, but Michonne skewered him first, and the wayward bullet then hit Carl in the eye. Rick frantically ran to get him medical assistance. That's his name, Ron. Thank you, uh, Glennis. Thank you, Ron. (laughs) (laughs) Because that Commonwealth gate opening and letting the herd in reminded me of the Jurassic Park gates also opening by mistake. Both being invaded by clever reptiles and now clever variant walkers. Where is that variant walker with the knife situated? <laughs> yeah, hmm. exactly. <laughs> Maggie was eavesdropping on Negan and Ezekiel's conversation, showing her that Negan has indeed changed his ways, setting up the spinoff, it seems, so that they can work together with a common goal, which Negan has been trying to tell Maggie that for a while now. Though the trigger to head off to New York must be really serious for them, Maggie especially, to put aside her animosity and hatred for Negan to work together for whatever common cause. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when we, when the the whole spinoff even, or was leaked, or they, you know, announced it way early than I think they probably should have. They should have held it off until now. Um, But, uh... I remember because I know like Renee was not on board with Negan and we kind of were like, well, but there's, you know, he has some redemption. We'll just see how it plays out to like, yeah, it was like, oh, a Maggie and Negan spinoff. Like that is impossible. But now it's definitely possible. It's just, you know, what, what drives them to New York and why is it going to be Maggie and Negan? You know, that's, that's the big question. Cause it's like, trying to think if like what could it be you know i mean it was the kids you know like i guess we'll see uh 
All right. Thank you, uh, Glennis, as always. Great, great, great feedback. Um, uh, hopefully, I'm with you. Uh, hopefully, we see Rick Grimes. I just, I feel like we're... <sighs> I guess we'll have to see. I mean, we'll definitely see Rick Grimes in the uh, the Talking Dead after show deal. They're going to have everybody there. And it's either going to be a big hype for the spinoff and stuff like that. But actually seeing him in the episode, as well as Michonne, unless they do some CRM kind of little hint, then, you know... I just, I don't know. We'll have to see and wait. And hopefully they do give us something like that. Yeah. Like I said before, if, if those uh, two are people, maybe it's Rick and Michonne. <laughs> I mean, who knows? <laughs> I'd have to yeah. have a good long look at them to, to see if, uh, you know, that, that would be a possibility, but it would be interesting. That would be. That would be interesting, but it would be a sh- it would be the shocker of shockers. It would, yeah, and it would also kind of it would also blow up than what the spinoff's about because it's kind of like this whole saving Rick or Rick, you know, or finding Rick at Michonne's on for him and her to show up now would be like okay, so then the spinoff's going to be like oh yeah, this is what happened during this whole time why they're do you know on the main show fighting the Commonwealth. Which could be entirely possible. So I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, that was everybody's feedback uh, for this episode. Um, did you guys have any other feedback to add? Yeah, I did. I don't. I have one thing I wanted to bring up, and it, it was kind of hinted at, but not directly. So I wanted to bring it up here is something that Renee brought up last week about um, the inequality, you know, and she was, she was saying she can't understand why, you know, we have this and all of that. Um, And we get, I mentioned last week that we were going to get a, a hint of that, or it was going to be addressed at least partially. And the thing I was thinking of was, when um the toady i can't remember her name but uh was talking to pamela and you know the whole thing got brought up about protecting the estates and leaving the the city um exposed you know basically leaving them for the walkers to eat and um that was i think the the best example that i could find for this being um inequality you know class society and you know we saw her meet with those those people you know and we had that one person who was uh you know kind of i'm so sad to hear about your son you know (laughs) if yeah (laughs) like those were members of the estate and um you know, so so she's protecting her uh, cronies and uh, her rich debutantes, and uh, the rest are just you know proverbial can- cannon fodder, or you know um, Walker feed. So it's just uh, it just goes to show you that uh, you know she's not she's not a a leader of the people. She's just you know. Yeah, uh, she's she's a monarch without a crown, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she, I bet she probably thinks she's like, oh yeah, if I lose uh, basically everybody outside the estate, then we can just rebuild and like, yeah, you know, and they save their own skin, but then they'll just be like, okay, but we'll just rebuild and you know, whatever soldiers are left that were still you know loyal to her, then they'll just pick back up and find new people and start it over and she can still have her little dinner parties we'll get the maid and the butler to put the fence back up (laughs) yeah well at this point all they need to do is just flip the switch and the door will close (laughs) Uh, well there is that yeah (laughs) it's not like they busted through the walls but uh 
All righty. All right. Well, then there's all that's next is. Let's get into our news, ratings, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. Well, this is a lot. So um, I put the Yellowstone in there just because it was on, and I had no idea that it was on like many networks. <laughs> they, oh, they was it on many networks? On a, I didn't. I didn't know that part. It, yeah, if you looked at the ratings, it was on the Paramount Network, CMT, MTV. I think it was on Comedy Central. Yes, like, and one of the they, big complaints, one of the big complaints has been some of the new episodes are not going to be on Paramount Plus first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, they're Yeah. Like yeah. right now, um the rights to Yellowstone is with uh Peacock. So Right, right. You know, at, like at some point we can assume that um, Paramount will take the rights back, but but uh, right now, you know, this is an old, an older deal, and they're streaming it with um, with Peacock. It's the yep. same same issue with um, uh, South Park. Like they'll have little little movies uh, of South Park on Paramount Plus, but the the actual TV show is with HBO Max, I believe. So, uh, yeah, it's it's just kind of funny. But anyway, so we'll yeah. we'll go into ratings. All I will get into them since they're traditionally mine. <laughs> uh, this this week, uh, it's good to say that the Walking Dead ratings are up. Uh, it got a 0.31 in the 18 to 49 with 1.468 million viewers. Uh, it was a dead heat with 0.49 in the 25 to 54, same as last week. It got a 0.86 in the 50 and over. Last week, it got a 0.83 in the 50 and over. And I didn't say it earlier. Last week, it got a 0.28 in the 18 to 49 with 1.386 million. So up almost 100,000 viewers, not quite. Um, I expect it to go up even higher next week. So Talking Dead was also up this week. It got a 0.007 in the 18 to 49 with 375,000 viewers. That's up from 0.05 and 321,000 viewers. So that's good. Interview with the Vampire, its last episode, was actually down this week. It got a 0.09 with 433,000 viewers. That's in the 18 to 49. Uh, 0.13 in the 25 to 54, and a 0.26 in the 50 and over, making number 47. Um, not a Star Trek reference this time. <laughs> There's a whole Star Trek thing <laughs> with Sporty 7, if you don't know. Um, and last week, it got a 0 0.14 in the 25 to 54 uh, and 0 0.26 in the 50 and over, making the number 28. I don't think I said it. Uh, 0 0.10, 18 to 49, with 473,000 viewers. So it was down for, uh, 40,000 viewers this week. Um, since it was, uh, gathered up by Kyle, the show that's getting like walking dead style ratings, uh, from yesteryear is Yellowstone and it got, and it was on, on several networks. And I guess it was, ep uh, showing two episodes this week. Um, I don't, I don't watch the show, so, uh, I, can't really comment on it, but it got a 1.87 in the 18 to 49 with 9.409 million viewers, a 2.66 in the 25 to 54, and a whopping 5.67 in the 50 and over, making it, of course, the number one show on Sunday night by a wide margin. Uh, the uh, the 9.14 uh, p.m airing got a 1.61 in the 18 to 49 with 8.439 million viewers with a 2.30 in the 25 to 54 and a 5.19 in the 50 and over making it the number three show however it was on other networks too 
So on <laughs> CMT, it got a 0 0.32, and this is a typo, the 81 to 49 <laughs> dark demographic. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> with 1.108 million. So right there, that puts it over 10 million um, to 10 and a half million. Um, I'll just skip down. On the MTB network, the eight o'clock got a 0 0.17 in the 18 to 49 with 408,000 viewers. So that makes it roughly 11 million. Um, and uh, a 0 0.20, sorry, a 0 0.30, I'm reading the wrong one, 0 0.20 in 25 to 54 and a 0 0.13 in the 50 and over, making that one the number 17. Uh, for the 914, uh, also on CMT, it got a 0 0.23 in the 18 to 49 with 894,000 viewers with a 0 0.30, 25 to 54, and a 0 0.47 in the 50 and over, making it the number 11 show. Um, and at 914 on MTV, it got a 0 0.15 with 442,000 viewers. That's in the 18 to 49 with a 0 0.19, 29 to 25 to 54, sorry, and a 0 0.19 in the 50 and over, making it the 20th episode. And you don't have it written down, but I guess it was also on Comedy Central where it got the number 27 and the number 33. So it was on a lot of show, <laughs> a lot of channels, roughly getting what, 12 million and, yeah. and 11 million respectively, I guess. So. That's yeah, that's yeah. pretty good, and like I say, that's um, that's roughly like season three, season four kind of ratings for The Walking Dead. So that's that's pretty impressive. Mm. I couldn't believe it was just on so many networks. I didn't know. I just watched it yeah. on Paramount, <laughs> and it was like, wait, it's number one, number three, number six. No it was like, well, they covered like <laughs> everything. Yeah, <laughs> um, crazy. Was there any? Let me see. I didn't. I didn't check. Um, hold on a second. At oh, there it is. Okay. Yes, we don't. We didn't have it listed, but uh, prior to The Walking Dead being on at nine o'clock, there was a making of The Walking Dead season eleven on at started at seven fifty four p.m. to be exact. It got a zero point one three. In the eighteen to forty nine, with six hundred and fourteen thousand viewers. So there's that. Uh, moving on, we have new parrots this week. Actually, we have two weeks of them um, for the week ending November fourth. We have uh, the Walking Dead was in the number six position with sixty times the demand of an average show. That was actually down from the previous week. Uh, and uh, for this week, ending in uh, November 11th, The Walking Dead was up a notch, which I'm not surprised. It got a 61.1 times the demand of an average show and um, ended up in the number five position. Um, it's kind of funny from week to week. Um, the numbers actually seem to go down for everyone with the exception of The Walking Dead. So actually, Saturday Night Live was also up looking at them. Um, the number one show, even though it's not on anymore, is uh, in both weeks was Game of Thrones. Uh, in the week ending November 4th, it was at 89.6 times the demand of an average show. And the week ending November 11th, it was 80.9 times the average show. And number two position was uh, both weeks, Stranger Things, 76.5 on ending November 4th and 74.8 ending uh, November 11th. And SpongeBob, <laughs> uh, proverbial number one for a long time. Uh, it is safely in number three with... 73.5 times the demand of an average show on November 4th. The week ending November 11th, it was at a 72.7 times 
anyway, so enough of that. Um, I also brought up and I finally posted it, I think yesterday on, on the Facebook group, the other page that exists, uh, which is basically a walking dead, uh, exclusive page, uh, shows the data for the United States and it's like a 30 day rolling average. Uh, the, the difference from market average was the same this week at 59 times. So it hasn't changed too much, uh, but that still puts it in the exceptional territory. Again, the first number I gave you, the 61.1, that's, that's like the week average. So, um, this is the 30 day, um, but it's up, uh, in demand 30.8% change. Um, and looking at the, <laughs> the one that you brought up LT last week, how is this show trending in the United States? And, and we see a 60 day trend of weekly demand for the walking dead compared to the weekly demand of all apocalyptic drama titles. And, um, <laughs> we see that the walking dead is up. It's the, the, uh, trend has been going up steady since, uh, 12th of September, which you can totally understand, uh, cause that's the start. It was, um, around the tales, the walking dead. And, um, we get a bump there at the beginning of October, which corresponds to the beginning of the se- the, the last part of the season. And it's gotten up the rest of the way, although there was a slight dip, uh, for the 24th of October, that was probably world series time. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's why yeah, yeah. it, it is at the 99th point nine percentile of all shows in the drama genre. And, uh, compared to other markets, it got, you know, with the United States being number one, um, number two market is great Britain slightly above from last week with a 52%. Also, uh, 49% slightly up from last week, Brazil. Uh, then Germany with 45%, France 43%, uh, Canada 40%, Russia 39%, Australia 39%, sorry, 36%, Italy 34%, Poland 33%, um, the Netherlands 33%, Spain 32%. Philippines, 32%, New Zealand, 31%, and Argentina, 29%. So anyway, that's where The Walking Dead is popular. I guess the number two market is uh, Great Britain. Yep. That's mm. it for me. All right. Well, I did for news. Um, <clears throat> we are getting uh, the final rundown or runtime of the series finale of the walking dead will be 90 minutes but of course that's with commercials so um it was saying it's like usually finale or like you know shows that run in these extended time like frames like for a 90 minutes rather than the 60 minutes uh it was like in past episodes um it usually clocked in about 64 to 65 minutes without commercials so we can expect around 20 minutes of show so yeah, I I was asking last episode. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like I would assume that we would get more than just the normal, you know, sixty minute time slot. So it looks like we will be getting. Yeah, I mean, at a on a ninety minute uh, commercial show, you know, it, it's roughly like about an hour, an hour minute, an hour and two or something like that. So, mm-hmm. which actually fits like. For example, what we saw with um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, um, like their finale was like an uh, an hour and two. So there must be some um, reason for that, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. that's... Yeah, because it's like they don't have... Well... No yeah, but but it does show with commercials. It, it, like if you don't... If you pay for the... If you don't pay for the... Uh, commercial free, you know, it comes with commercials, number one. And number two, it shows with commercials in Canada. So, because it's oh, on, okay, huh. it, it's on a network, a cable network in Canada, all the 
Canada. All the Star Trek shows are on, um, uh, what's it called? CTV Sci-Fi, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, cool deal. But yeah, so we'll they should have pl- more time to make, you know, tell the st- end of the story. So mm. I'm curious if we'll get the, that 20 minutes will be our little Judith talking. <laughs> like I said, I was hoping that they were going to do an extended show for the fi- finale. Yeah. It makes sense to do that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do an extended Talking Dead as well. Um, I oh, yeah. haven't I haven't looked at that, but I, that wouldn't surprise me either. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, that was it for all the news. Uh, so, LT, you want to tell people how to interact with us? I shall. Uh, we want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Walking Dead TTM. To submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. You can send us email. That's Walking Dead at talkthroughmedia.com. You can also use our feedback form on the webpage. That's at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. If you'd like to leave us voicemail, remember you can call 216-232-6146. And all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast does. And to support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough. And we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mike Rollo, Scott Kerr, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, that guy over there, Lawrence Todd, <laughs> Hello. and this guy, me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Mike, Scott, Dieta, and Renee will be getting an early episode of a version of the episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. There you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them or tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. So, Brian, what else can be listened to on our network? Well, uh, James and Kim are covering Star Trek Prodigy right now. They just uh, released the episode for a very quirky episode which was um the season one episode 13 all the world's a stage and uh those of you that watch the show could probably understand what i mean by that it it was it was (laughs) it was interesting but anyway um and uh we they're going forward with that and we're starting to uh go through lower decks now so right now i'm editing the episode the the first episode of the season for lower decks so um you know hopefully i'll get that out in the next few days and uh of course we can't forget that james and kim are also doing uh rebinge deep space nine and they are into season six now and that's been um I, th- I think this week is the week that they actually started with season six. They took a little little break, but now they're um, releasing the season six episodes for Deep Chase Nine. Then they just got the two seasons left, and then they move on to Voyager. Yay. Yep. Cool. So that's it. All right. All right. For the final episode, The Walking Dead, Season 11, Episode 24, Rest in Peace. Written by, uh, well, the stories by Angela King, teleplay by Cora Reed and Jim Barnes, and directed by Greg Nicotero. Uh, obviously, there is no description on AMC Plus because it is not being released early. So we all have to wait to see it all at the same time, save that channel. 
All right. So until next time, I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. And I'm Brian. And this is The Walking Dead Talk Through. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.